Well, hello. Thanks for coming. This is Kevin De Groot. He is a policy and market development analyst at the U.S. American um, engineering company Antares Group. Um, I would like to know from you how is the situation on the solar thermal market in America in this moment? Well, actually, it's uh, hanging in there despite the recession. We have some uh, good programs at the federal level. The investment tax credit um, extension that was done just before the recession really hit um, made a huge difference. So the market boomed after that. Um, we've had a little bit of pullback because of the recession, because of the economic situation, um, which has really affected the housing sector and construction in general. But um, we also have some promising new utility programs, which means state-level markets. And California is probably the you know, stellar example there with a, a really utility-focused program that's been able to isolate funds and apply them so that we've got some continuity and some kind of long-term outlook for the market there. And Hawaii also is still booming. They're actually requiring solar water heating on all new construction, which is a big boom for us too. So. I would say it's good and it will be better when the economy turns around. <laughs> well, I think what is really challenging to continuously provide subsidies in times of very empty public budgets, you know, because on the state level there's a lot of difficulties with the budget and so on. So how is the uh, United States and the states on the state level coping with this situation? Well, um, for instance, California has really isolated the funding for its program because it's running through their utility system. So it's not a separate um, you know, tax that needs to be put on by you know, politically every year through the legislature, et cetera. The money's there, it's kind of picked out by utility, and then it's given back to the utilities as something to invest in a residential and commercial program. So it has the potential for a lot of continuity. Um, on the other hand, we're just seeing it get started up, so we have high hopes. Um, it needs to develop and probably a little bit more education and outreach to get people excited about it. So, uh, so that means in particular that um, the money is collected by each single ratepayer in California. Is this the case? Yeah, it's more ratepayer based. So, and it's more based on um, you know the utilities investing into it and also um, you know really collecting it back through the rate process. Okay, that means that in California the, bro the program is financed through single ratepayer contribution, more or less. Yeah, it's a, it's a function of the ratepayers and a rate co the collections of the utilities. And so um, it's not dependent on outside action to impo impose a tax, etc. It's something that can be done within the utility system like a rate um, action. So I think that gives it a little bit more staying power and also gives it a closer link to the utilities that really it helps for them to be supportive of uh, solar thermal and solar in general. So, It seems that the utilities are playing a big role in also giving their individual support schemes. Um, I heard about a group which is called USH2O. Can you explain a bit what this is about? Uh, USH2O is a kind of a, a working group of uh, utilities in the U.S. that are involved in solar water heating and solar heating and cooling development to some extent. Um, and they represent a whole different range of programs from some that are self-initiated to some that are you know, put in place by states. But uh, all of them have a, an interest and a commitment and a realization that solar water heating has an impact on their electric or natural gas utility system. Um, and we actually do have some natural gas utilities involved in USH2O. Do you think it will be realistic that the state will implement a national standard, um, like a quota for solar thermal within the fossil fuel? Um, well, that whole part of the national action is uh, up in the air, because it was um, tied in with the cap and trade issue which has um, you know, really been pushed off the agenda. Um, I think it will. Um, the question is where it appears. Will it appear in the renewable section of the portfolio standard or will it be in the energy efficiency portion where you know, potentially it competes with a lot of other measures, et cetera. So um, there's a debate of uh, if we can get a carve out, a set aside for the solar thermal you know, the way PV gets a carve out in many RPS systems and I think that has a lot of potential. But again, that's all up in the air now <laughs> until we get some national action.
<laughs> so is PV, is solar thermal very much in the shade of PV in the United States? I would say yes, yes. I mean, PV's uh, got a much higher um, public profile. Um, there are a few states that have portfolio standards that recognize solar water heating, but there are many more that have photovoltaics and that have a carve-out for photovoltaics to have a set percentage of uh, a portfolio standard. So there's a lot of work to be done there to kind of get even treatment or um, broader recognition for solar water heating and solar heating and cooling more generally. Okay, thank you so much.